Why is faith called a shield? A shield, mm. a shield is used to absorb blows. That's right. Faith is used to absorb problems. That's right. My trust in God is like a buffer. Mm. When things come my direction, I believe God and my faith in God help me to handle or absorb the problem better. That's right. Now, if I got a shield and something's constantly hitting my shield, my arm will get bruised. Yeah. My arm will get sore. That's right. But at least my arm is intact. That's right. That's so right. situations may cause me to get bruised yeah. and have pain, yeah. but at least my spiritual well-being is intact. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. And I want everyone to listen, you that are watching around the world and you that are here. Right. I want Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 49. 49. And the first verse. Genesis. I want to show you Jacob's eldest son. Right. His name was Reuben. That's right. But Jacob said a very important thing about Reuben. Mm -hmm. And he told the truth about him. That's right. He complimented him first, mm -hmm. but he also saw a dangerous flaw in Reuben. Listen. Genesis chapter 49, we're starting at verse 1. All right. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Yes. Gather yourselves together and hear. Ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben. Reuben. Thou art my firstborn. You are my firstborn. You are my eldest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My might. You are my might. And the beginning you of my strength. You are the beginning of my strength. The, the excellency of dignity. You see him complimenting them? The excellency of dignity. And the excellency, and the of, excellency power. of power. Unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. Unstable. How bad was Reuben instability? Unstable as water. And as a result? Thou shalt not excel. You ain't going nowhere. Amen. You have people the same way. That's right. Unstable. They can be steadfast mm -hmm. and everything natural, That's fleshy, right. carnal. That's right. But when it come to God, unstable as water. Not ready. Not ready. Pastor Dennis, I come to church when you come in town. I'm not your God. That's right. If I was your God, I'd destroy you for not coming. <laughs> Amen. You're unstable. Unstable. Unstable as water, and as a result, the Bible says, Thou shalt not excel. And if the greatest excelling that can happen to us is be saved when the Lord come. Mm. But if you unstable, imagine the Lord come for you in the midst of your instability. That's right. Now let me bring it more closer. That's right. If we're unstable, not even God can count on us. That's right. Did you hear me? That's right. If you're unstable, not even God can count on you. In James chapter 1, we're starting at verse 6. Says. But at right, verse 5. All right. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Yes. That give it to all men liberally and abradeth not. What is it? And it shall be given him. Uh -huh. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Doing what? Driven with the wind. Driven with the wind. And tossed. Tossed. For let not that man think. Don't even let that man think. That he shall receive anything of the Lord. Don't even think it. That's right. That's right. Don't even think it. Let that God going to give you anything, anything of the when you're unstable like water. A double-minded man. A double-minded man. Is unstable. How bad, William? In all his ways. All his ways. All his ways. In church. Out of church. False prophecies sometime up. Sometimes down, down, <laughs> down, down level with the ground. Ain't no Bible say that. You ain't level ain't with no Bible. ground, you old liar. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Unstable as water. Unstable as water. And what did James say? A double-minded man Are you is a double-minded person today? Unstable. You used to believe in one God. 
Mm. Someone came along and told you it's three or two. Amen. You used to believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone told you you ain't got to be baptized. Yeah. You used to didn't sit under woman preachers. Now someone got you sitting under Mother Gressel. That's right. Double minded. You used to didn't believe flesh and blood is in heaven. Now mm -hmm. some queer come along and tell you it's up there and you believe it. Believe it. Double minded. You see right in the Bible, first in the church apostles. Now you walk around, it ain't none. It ain't none. Double minded. Unstable. You read the scriptures, Jesus on the right hand of God and let you know that right hand is power, right hand is majesty, right hand authority. And now you think that Jesus standing on the right hand of somebody else. That's Two right. of them. Two of them. Double minded. Hey, you received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Amen. Now somebody come along and told you you ain't got to speak. Now you denounce what happened to you. That's right. Double minded. Amen. The Holy Ghost says what? A double-minded man is unstable. And how much? In all his ways. Imagine having a double-minded overseer. Mm. Then you cannot trust nothing that devil preach. Confidence. Because his double-mindedness spirit is going to spread all among that congregation. That's right. And the Bible says like people, like, this. like priests. Confidence. If the blind leave the blind, they're both Fall into the ditch. That's right. Give me the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 19. Proverbs 29, 25, 25 19 says. Confidence. Confidence. In an unfaithful man. Confidence in an unfaithful man. In time of trouble. In time of trouble. Is like a broken tooth. It's like a broken tooth. And a foot. And a foot. Out of joint. Out of joint. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Why is that? Why is that? Let's go back to the hood. When you was in the hood, your boys rolled with you, I got your back. Yeah. And if two guys jump you, the guys that's with you, they're going to mix it up with you. That's right. Or the old heads going to stand around and say, all right, that's where the term fair one come in at. Yeah. The old heads stood around and said, all right, this is going to be a fair one. Mm -hmm. Ain't no one pulling out no blades, no nothing. Yeah. We're going to make sure y'all keep everything intact. Toe that's to right. toe. Bop, 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 right. bop, 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 Just going at it. Amen. But if you like a broken tooth, broken tooth, or a foot out of joint, yeah, the moment you someone back you should have, mm -hmm. you got that foot out of joint. Yeah, uh, I can't help you. <laughs> That's right. That's the way we are when it comes to standing for the word. That's right. We got a broken tooth, broken meaning tooth. we won't speak up. Yeah. Mm. Amen. We got a foot out of joint. Out of that joint. means we won't walk according. Wow. Mm. We won't speak up. Mm. And we won't walk according. Amen. False teaching affect our mouth. We won't stand up for the word. Yeah. False teaching change our steps because a good man's steps Lord. is ordered by the Lord. By the Lord. Mm. Are you getting this? Amen. Go back to where you were. Back Come in, on, Williams. Back in James 1 and verse 8. Follow me. A double-minded man is unstable. And how much? In all his ways. Now, when you got a sound mind, your husband can't change it. That's right. When you're walking with God, your wife can't change it. That's right. When you're walking with God, money won't change it. Mm -hmm. Your new house, your new car won't change it. Mm -hmm. Your new suit of clothing won't change you, brother. That's right. When you're sound, you just thank God for your suit and you come wish up God just like you got jeans on. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man, when you come with your new suit, you get on your knees and pray just like you got overalls. Yeah. You ain't worrying about how dirty your knees got. Amen. You ain't down there praying and checking your knees at the same time. No. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you ain't doing that. No, no. No, no. Come on, son. Back in Ephesians 6 and verse 14. Follow me. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Yes. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hold it. Breastplate means just chest protection. That's right. What is it about our chest that need protected? Heart. Your heart. The, heart. the breastplate of righteousness. righteousness. The word protects your heart. That's right. You should have stable emotions. Mm -hmm. If your emotions are unstable, 
You can be too close to someone who can co coerce you to depart from the faith of Jesus Christ. Their heart is divided. The Bible says. In, in Hosea chapter 10 and verse 2. Hosea 10 and 2 says. Their heart, their heart is divided. Is divided. Divided. Now, mm -hmm. no one should be able to separate your heart, your heart. and they have most of it and That's God right. have a little bit of it. That's right. When that happens, That's right. you're going to try to please them first yeah. if you please God at all. Amen. Amen. That's why I often say it ain't no woman or no man. No man should love a woman with all his heart. Oh, heart. No man, should, no woman should love a man with all her heart. The only one to deserve all your heart is God. You're supposed to love that man from the heart and love that woman from the heart. But only the Lord, your creator, yeah. is supposed to possess all, all your heart. All your heart. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Breastplate of righteousness. of righteousness. Of righteousness. The term righteousness means doing right. Right. So you want your emotions to be right mm -hmm. towards him or her. That's Don't right. ever let a wicked person bring you down to their dog-like mentality. Amen. Because the moment they do, oh, I thought you saved. Yes, they will. That's huh? true. I, I thought you saved. That's the way the, de the sinners are. Yeah. That wicked man and wicked woman to bring you down just like them. Only if you allow them to dictate the emotions of your heart. How many here when they pray to ask God to give them strength? Raise your hand. Now my question is to you, what do you ask God to strengthen? Your body? They sound like a bunch of hummingbirds. <laughs> now, let's go to school. Yeah. Because we consist of more than a body, That's right. don't ever pray and ask God just strengthen your body. Yeah. Because you consist of more than a body. More than body. Mind, soul, body, and spirit. and spirit. So all the elements of self need to be strengthened or built up in God yeah. because it is all the dynamics of self that's under attack by Satan. That's right. Satan attacks the mind. Oh, yeah. You break a person mentally, that person will crumble. Oh, yeah. A person's mind is the foundation of their existence. That's right. If the mind collapses, the heart collapses, the body collapses, oh, collapse. spiritually they're in a rut. Yeah. yeah. Amen. So you want a strong mind? Oh my. And that will give you a strong heart. That's right. Which will help stabilize your physical behavior in obeying God. Amen. And ask God to strengthen your spirit. All the dynamics of self yeah. must sit under the hotness and the coldness of the word to strengthen your divine being. That's right. Are you listening? And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod. Your feet shod. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hold it. Your feet shod. shod. Mm -hmm. With the preparations of the gospel of, of peace. peace. The gospel prepare your feet how to walk. That's but right. notice, it's called the preparations of the gospel, the gospel of, of, peace. of peace. Peace is directed at the feet. Because God is not the author of confusion, Wonderful. so God will not lead you in an atmosphere or a climate of confusion. That's right. Wonderful. So the preparations of the gospel of peace, of peace, letting you know that the gospel will stabilize your steps and give you peace. Yes. And sometimes for you to have peace, again, you have to walk away okay. from him, her, or them. That's right. That's right. Let me say it again. Many times to have peace, you got to walk away from him, her, or them. Yeah. That's right. I'd rather have peace with God than have peace with the human family. Amen. Amen. Listen. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wait, 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 wait. Amen. Notice how this reads. Above all. That statement is not attached to nothing else he's going to read. No. Above all. 
taking the shield of faith. Why? Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Why is faith above all? Above all. The reason why faith is above all, because none of the other things work right. if I don't believe God. That's right. That's right. Nothing else works. Nothing else works. None of the armor works. Yeah. Faith activates all the armor. That's right. That's right. All the armor is tied to my faith. Amen. I cannot put on the armor of God when I don't even believe in God. That's right. It is written, he that cometh to God must believe he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. God is the thread that holds all your armor together. Go ahead, man. Without God, Go ahead, brother. your armor falls apart. That's right. Above all. Notice, above all. Taking the shield of faith. Why is faith called a shield? A shield, mm. a shield is used to absorb blows. That's right. Faith is used to absorb problems. That's right. My trust in God is like a buffer. Mm. When things come my direction, I believe God and my faith in God help me to handle or absorb the problem better. That's right. Now, if I got a shield and something's constantly hitting my shield, my arm will get bruised. Yeah. My arm will get sore. That's right. But at least my arm is intact. That's right. That's so right. situations may cause me to get bruised yeah. and have pain, but at least my spiritual well-being is intact. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Believe God. That's right. Be the shield of faith. Where and without the faith, mm -hmm. no other part of this armor works. That's right. Listen. Uh, above all, taking the shield of faith. That what? Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Quench what? All the fiery darts of the wicked. It never said just darts. Fiery darts. Fiery darts. Fiery darts. Fire mean power. Yeah. Darts that which penetrates. Mm -hmm. So Satan bring that which penetrates into your mind, soul, body, and spirit, and it's powerful. Powerful. And it can damage it. That's right. Make you hate the ones that love you. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Turn you against the light that brought you out of darkness. Right. That's right. And then put you in a pretend church. <laughs> Amen. A church that pretends to be holy. Yeah. Listen. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword. Hold it. And take the helmet of salvation. How many of your brothers played football? You used to play football. When you play running back, brother, you go through that line and you yeah. drop that head. That's right. The helmet of what? Of salvation. Let's go to school. The term salvation means deliverance or healing. That's right. Now, the helmet of salvation. salvation. Helmet is head protection. Right. Why do your head need protection? Mm. You need protection from the dumb thoughts that you have. <laughs> the right. wicked thoughts that you have. Right. And so the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Right. So we want to inherit or take on the mind of God, mm. the thinking of God. Mm. So when we approach problems, we would approach them the way God want us to approach them. That's right. It is written, mm. the and thought of foolishness sin. is sin. sin. So we don't want to approach things without our helmet, helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation means deliverance, so we need God to deliver our mind from the way we think, because the way we think gets us in trouble. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. So you need the helmet of, of salvation. And, and if you notice about a helmet, it covers the whole head. <laughs> Amen. Because the whole head needs deliverance. That's right. Because the book says the whole head is sick. Is sick. It's sick. Amen. That's what the word of God says. The whole head is sick. The whole, not half of it, no. not part of it, no. 
not a third of it. In the book of Isaiah chapter. I, listen, read quick, son. Isaiah 1 and verse 5. Says what? Why should you be stricken anymore? Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. You're going to be hard head more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. Look at the whole, and the whole head is sick. Whole head. That's why you need the helmet of salvation. That's right. Because Satan is constantly throwing stuff at your mind, and you need God to deliver that old wicked hell bound mind you have. That's right. Even while the word of God being Even preached. It's amazing how your mind will go one step beyond or to the outer limits. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Read quick, son. Back in Ephesians 6 and verse 17. <laughs> yeah. And take the helmet of salvation. What? And the sword of the spirit. Wait a minute. You need the sword of the spirit. What is that? Which is the word of God. Amen. You need the word. Amen. I keep telling you, we ain't moving from it. That's right. You can't fight without the sword of the spirit. The spirit. Why is it called a sword? Mm -hmm. Because God separates and cut us, cut ties that we have with that which is ungodly That's and right. that which is wicked. Only the spirit can disconnect you from evil. That's right. And sometimes the evil that you connect it to, you mistake it for a friend. Yeah. And you need God to help you to sever ties between you and that devil that you're too close to. That's right. All right. And take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. And the sword and the of the spirit. the sword of the Lord. Which is the word of which God. Which is God's word. Praying always. Praying how much? Always. You got to be prayerful. That's right. Why do I got to be a prayerful pastor, Dennis, that help keep you dressed? Yeah. Huh? Go ahead. Sometimes your armor can come unraveled, but if you pray, it helps tighten it up on you. That's right. <laughs> Glory to God what he's at. Praying always. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication prayer and in the supplication. spirit. all prayer and supplication. How? In the spirit. Hold it right there. Amen. Let me explain this Amen. praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit don't mean every time you pray, you in tongues or you shake it. No. Do you understand? That's right. Give me the book of Corinthians. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I want to explain what do praying in the spirit mean. 1 Corinthians. A lot of people think praying in the spirit mm -hmm. is just when you're down there praying and the Lord deal with you. Hakalaba shata rumba 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 rumba. Or you're praying in the spirit and you're about to go through the floor. <laughs> That's right. Uh-uh. No. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> Glad for the move. <laughs> But let me enlarge That's right. on the meaning of spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. Listen. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I remember also. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, what are they? They are spirit. They are what? Spirit. All right. Now the Bible says I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. Let's go to school. Now, if Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, the words. So when I pray the words that I utter, the words that I utter cannot contradict what the spirit say in the book. That's right. I cannot ask God for anything that violate the book. That's right. I cannot desire nothing that violate the book. Right. I can't make a request that contradict the book. That's right. And no need for me to pray and I'm arrogant and high-minded and self-will. The Bible said if my people which are called by my name will humble, humble themselves, themselves, then pray. Thank I got you. to humble, then ask. That's it. And when I'm humble, then ask, I still can't ask outside of God's will. That's right. What is it then? I, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I got to pray with the Spirit so my words got to coincide with the words of the Lord. That's right. And, and I will pray with the understanding also. Know what you're asking for. Amen. Good teaching, brother. Sometimes what we ask for, we can't handle. That's true. That's true. Pray with understanding. Unders Amen. Oh, Lord, I want a wife. What kind? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Lord. Lord, I want a husband. You got him. Now you don't want him. Hey, now you don't want him. <laughs> Amen. Lord, my wife left me. Bring her back. When she come back, Lord, send her away from here. <laughs> Amen. Pray with understanding. The understanding. Understanding. This is how important or how sincere you should be about your salvation. Whatever you ask God for, if that thing will cause you to be lost, tell God, don't give it to you. That's right. That's right. Put your soul as the top priority. Amen. Make that more important. 
Mm -hmm. There ain't anything you want in life. That's right. You can have the man, you can have the house, you can have cars, you can have money. Yeah. So, yeah. none of those things will save you. All those things will perish. That's right. That's and right. this is what's distracting people. People brag, oh man, I own my house. Nobody in here own their house, even if it's paid off. Amen. You can't prove that, Pastor Jennings. Wait till you die. Wait till you die. And see, can you take it with you? That's right. That's right. You get all crazy about them, that chinchilla your husband stole for you. <laughs> get down about your fur coat because you got a dead calf on your back. Right. Or a rodent for a pocketbook. A rodent. Huh? That's right. I don't care nothing about that mess. No. Got on your alligator, crocodile shoes, fine. Go ahead. You can have on a whole snakeskin suit and slither all through the church. But remember, you better shed that evil. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Go ahead, take God. You better shed that evil. So all of us, family, all of us, you that are watching and you that are here, need to get dressed up with the armor of God. Some of us started to get dressed, but Satan hindered us That's right. and started stripping us. Yeah. That's why our mind is worse than it ever was. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes preachers taught you how to put it on, the helmet, but they never taught you how to strap it. That's right. That's right. See, when we played football, we just didn't put the helmet on. We had a chin strap. Yeah. And even then, if the hit come too hard, mm -hmm. it'll knock the helmet clean off your head. Yes, it will. Teaching not only shows you how to put the helmet of salvation on, yeah. but it also shows you how to keep it on. Keep it. Because when you, like a running back, man, when you got the hand off that ball, mm -hmm. the objective of the defense is to go after that running back. Right. And they don't care if they got to jump over men that's blocking for you. That's right. They are gunning for you. It been many times, man, when they hand that ball off to me, boom, I'm running. Running. And sometimes, because I ran track and jump hurdles, sometimes when a person come down, I would jump over. Mm -hmm. But one day, <laughs> glory to God, <laughs> one day I said, <laughs> Amen. And Williams can bear with We was playing ball and I was doing a punt return. You that know what a punt return is, they kick it down. I was in the back, mm. running, boom. And just running, breaking tackles. Let's <laughs> shake it. Brother, this one brother, and he's probably watching and listening. Reggie Hinton. Reggie Hinton. Listen, that was over 35 years ago. Yep. And so that hit had to have been so good <laughs> 35 years ago, I still remember. Amen. Man, Reg could play. Oh, yes. I saw Reg coming from that backfield. He was moving. He was calculating. <laughs> I'm coming this way. I did a move, and Reg timed me perfect. <laughs> Reg went off both feet and he hit my, from my knees to my ankles, he took both legs out. And I remember spinning. <laughs> like that soap opera, as the world turns. <laughs> I remember my eyes open and everything. And when I hit the ground, boom, I hit the ground so hard, the wind came out of me. <laughs> Reg came over, looked at me and laughed, said, Nicky, you all right? He helped me up. Man, I had to shake his hand. I said, Reg, that was the best hit I ever had. Wow. That, that, he took my legs, legs out. out. <laughs> Sometimes, because we are half-dressed, right. we have assumed and took too much in our hands that we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually is not even prepared to handle. That's true. Listen, the Bible said let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak, correct? 
How in the world are you going to take the burden of your brother and sister when you can't even handle your own? That's true. First, know yourself. That's right. You have to know your boundaries, your limitations. It doesn't matter. God is not a hype. Right. No. You ever come out of prayer, man, you feel like you can push buildings over. You say, <laughs> oh, man, you feel so spirit, man. You out there walking the street. Hey, glory to God. You on your job. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Hey, just walk. Hey, brother, you all right? Yes, I am. Yes. Your boss, brother John, you all right? Yes, I am. <laughs> all happy. All happy. That day. You're happy that day. That's right. Notice what I said. You're happy that day up until 4 o'clock. By 4.15, all it takes is the right phone call. That's true. With the right amount of problems and circumstances, right. and it make you forget that you even had the Holy Ghost. That's right. If you're not careful, you'll be on that phone. Why you mother? Oh. Yes, you will. I thought the Lord delivered me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Know yourself. And the only way you can truly know yourself, you got to have experience that challenges yourself that's right man you can jump and shout and roll around till you turn to an egg roll <laughs> experience teaches you yourself yeah are you listening amen so don't put yourself on no pinnacle and god didn't put you there nope. let the lord exalt you that's right he that exalts himself shall be a base yeah. he that humble himself god will exalt him exalt. it's not based upon the amount of strip that you quote how many times you come to church? How long you shout? If you shout off every song and grind your heels down. That's right. Remember, when the benediction is given, now you got the world to contend with. Amen. And it's my job as a minister to teach you how to deal with the world and how to be dressed with the armor of God and mm -hmm. remain dressed because Satan will strip that armor off yes, of you. Yes, he will. And Satan don't always strip the armor off viciously. Or violently. Sometimes it's just subtle. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Subtle. subtle. It's like that man who's subtle and got experience. And he's with that woman. Before she knows, she feels something on snap. <laughs> what, what, wait a minute. What happened? That's right. His hands are subtle. Yeah. She don't even remember how he got back there. She thinks something broke. It ain't nothing broke. That's right. You got a subtle demon around you. That's right. He's a safe cracker. Amen. And that's the way the devil is. The devil subtle. Goes. Before you know it, your helmet is off. Yeah. Before you know it, your breastplate is gone. Yeah. Because some man or some woman came along and told you and convinced you that you can have just as much confidence in them as you can God until you don't need church. You don't need God. All you need is me. You such a dumb fool. You believe it. Believe it. And now he or she got you going to hell and your loved ones is pleading with you to come back to God. But you so blindsided you see nobody but him and her. That's right. And they teach you how to hate God and how to hate church and got you believing all you need is them and once they coerce you manipulate you and use you and abuse you won't be for long they'll dump you on the side of the road like recycled trash that's right because all they want is to get out of you what they want until they can't get no more until you come to your senses and don't give up no more right that's right put on the armor of god church Whole armor. You that have not repented of your sins and was not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you don't have no armor. No. So I would like to dress you. That's right. The first clothing, you, you, you get in the first clothing now, first. you're hearing the word of God. That's right. Be sorry about being a sinner. Mm -hmm. You know you're one. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, you I go to church every Sunday. So do insects. Yeah. And they're not sorry about crawling on you. No. We want you to be sorry about being the sinner, dancing, smoking, drinking, gambling, partying, lying, right. two and three wives and five and six husbands. That's right. Want you to be sorry about going to the club. You ain't that far down in the south. I know y'all got clubs, yeah? Amen. 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 
Bible said, repent. Then Peter, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, South Carolina, mm -hmm. it's time for you to get on God's side. That's God's right. side. Come out of every church in the city. Which one, Pastor Jenny? I said every church in the city. All right. Come out of all of them and walk in the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Repent of your sins and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. To get your sins washed away. For the remission of sins. And, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody got to walk by the same rule and mind the same thing. Anybody don't want to go to hell. If you don't want to go to hell, if you want to go, hell is available. <laughs> That's right. I mean, if you want, if you're so you want cute, to you're too cute to be baptized because you're scared your mascara is going to mm. be all messed up. Hell going to ruin it. Yes, it will. Hell going to burn it clean off your face. Oh, yeah. You better hear the old man now, Mr. and Miss Thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to be right with God and be baptized, baptized and get your soul right with God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. If you don't want to go to hell, stand on your feet if you want it. Amen. Wonderful. Come on. Amen. Wonderful. You that are standing, go straight to the back right there. You that are standing, go right to the back. You that are standing, go to the back. My job of being here in South Carolina is to save your soul. Come out of all your That's churches. Right. Follow the truth of the gospel. We have a local church here in Florence, South Carolina, 1010 Gibbs Avenue. Be there. We have a local temple in Columbia, South Carolina. What's that, 2801? 2801 Schoolhouse Road. We dedicated the beautiful temple there. Orangeburg, God willing, we look to be coming to your area there because you're, you're just bombing me with letters. You want us to come back and open up a temple there. They want us everywhere.